In our first story uh, tonight, Finance Minister Ken Ofuriata has reviewed the expected revenue loss to the country as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister now projecting about 15.85 billion cities. Now, this represents a significant increase from the initial 11 billion projection. George Raffae has been going through the numbers. He's here to unpack that for us, George. So what's changed? Where are we getting these latest numbers well, from? Well, Dara, what changed? It tells you that each and every day, the, the economy is bleeding mm. and therefore when the numbers comes in from the various government agencies the ministry of finance is then required to update us and that is why first we had about 11 billion and now it shot up to almost 16 billion mm. these data were captured in the document that the finance minister presented to parliament when he sought to see, uh, get some approval for this loan package from the bank of ghana about 10 billion ghana cities right now if you go through that document, it gives you a fair idea where the areas the laws are coming from. You can talk about petroleum revenue, you can talk about taxes and the non-taxes as well. And all these things sum up to the 15.58 billion Ghana cities. Now, if you go through the document again, Darryl, you get a fair idea about how big the fiscal gap is. So you're looking right. at somewhere around 21 billion Ghana cities. Now, lucky for the Ministry of Finance, They've been able to secure this packet from the Bank of Ghana. So obviously, minus uh, 10 billion from 21, the, the gap comes in a little bit. But it tells you that there is still a gap that has to be filled down. All right, uh, 16 billion uh, cities, that's quite significant. So what would be the implication for government's budget? Well, that is why the Minister of Finance is supposed to present a media review to mm. us and trying to review the assessment. It has serious implications. Some would say that the minister might be, if I can say, a big dilemma. Now, in a COVID-19 era, how do you plug that revenue loophole? You don't want to go out there and increase taxes because of right. the signals that it will send. Also, if you tell the Ghana Revenue Authority that let's still work with the the numbers that we have in terms of companies and individuals, and they even give any signal of being aggressive. Some businesses will tell you that you are being insensitive because, listen, our numbers are not good. I'm not doing well. So why revenue authority coming to me mm. to ask me for money? Now, in times like these, what you also need is that you stimulate the economy. Just a few right. hours ago, in Russia, they announced trillions of, uh, uh, billions of dollars rather, to try and turn the economy around. These are times when you pump in more money into the economy to turn around the economy. So the last thing that you want to do, Daryl, is try to cut down on your expenditure. Right. So it's a dilemma. What do you do in trying to do this? Do you also go out there and borrow? Now, if you go into the market to borrow, you'll be competing with those small businesses out there that will also want to go to the commercial bank mm. and borrow as well. So the finance minister is indeed in a tight corner in trying to plug this loophole, this big hole, in this particular time. So we're all been looking forward to see what would he be doing when he goes to parliament to present this uh, media review and see what, how he's going to close this gap <laughs> and also ensure that going into an election year, you don't want a very wide deficit mm. because it tells you that things could even be bad going forward in trying to correct that deficit. Well, whilst the finance minister tries to find a way around this, the impact on the individual, help us understand the gravity of it. Well, so therefore, individuals like you, if you have any SME, any business, again, if Ghana Revenue Authority moves to try and make sure you are compliant, mm. it then sends signal that they are insensitive because then should I honor my tax obligations now? I, I cannot even pay my workers and all the rest. So it has an implication on your disposable income as a company and even liquidity as well. So that might not be good. Let's look at the project side. If the finance minister decides that they're going to cut, maybe that road in front of your house and mm -hmm. all the rest, if they have to hold on to it, it has implications on you getting to work early, even cutting goods from maybe your workplace to the ports and all the rest. So on the individual side, if he tries to be aggressive, it will have an impact on your disposable income. In cutting down on some of these projects, that might also be good for you as an individual in moving from your house to work, productivity and all those things. So that is how it might impact you as an individual. I mean, imagine that you are also as a contractor, mm. you are waiting for these monies to pay you so that you also on loan to someone or pay to someone. That is how those cuts might hit various sectors of the economy and even you as well, Daryl. All right. Thank you very much, uh, George Jaffe. No matter how you look at it, uh, it doesn't look good. Well, 
So we are talking about the implications of COVID-19 and as the global economy heads into a recession as a result of the pandemic, one grave concern for millions of households has been the impact this will have on food security, especially in Ghana and across Africa. The Food and Agriculture Organization has been proffering answers to the issue, calling on government to build resilience. Charles Aite has more in this report. What we can do is to prepare ourselves to build resilient systems. Abebe Hel Gabriel is the Food and Agriculture Organization's regional representative for Africa. He is warning Ghana and the rest of Africa of a blackout in food security if governments do not build the needed structures to ensure food supply chains are not disrupted by the effects of the coronavirus. When we're talking about resilience, it's not just a conceptual matter. It's really about making our systems whether it is production system or livelihood system or even economy-wide systems to be able to absorb the shocks, able to recover from the shocks, whether it is investment. Already, there has been a national debate over the cost of foodstuff at various market centers amid the coronavirus pandemic. Everything is expensive now, everything. Even uh, what do you call it, plantain. Yeah. Plantain three is two twenty Ghana. If you have the big ones, small big ones, three twenty Ghana. It's too expensive. First, we could go to Accra with six hundred cities, but now we go with maybe thousand two hundred or thousand three hundred to buy the same things we used to buy at the first. Usually, if I have to spend like maybe hundred cities for a month full stuff, now I'm spending like hundred and fifty or two hundred cities, and it's a problem. Mm. Yeah, especially at this part of the market. The, the price are too high. But the Agric Minister also Akoto insists food security and prices in Ghana are the best. Only four years ago, a bunch of plantain in Accra, you have to spend 40 Ghana cities. Now three, four, city, four cities, and I repeat, three, four, five cities, you can get a bunch of plantain. It shows you clearly that we have come and reduced prices of food, even in the major cities like Accra, where if uh, because of the substantial reduction in, in prices in the markets. I think it's very much important. On a virtual interaction via yeah. Zoom, I asked Abebe Hill Gabriel of the Food and Agriculture Organization's direction for the government of Ghana and Africa as a whole in times as this. The solution to a food price inflationary pressure <laughs> ensures sustained food supply and FAO is supporting the efforts to ensure sustained production trade, food safety, and nutrition. So yes, not only that the FAO is concerned, but we are doing a lot supporting the efforts of countries and partners uh, so that this can be mitigated. Of the 135 million people globally who are estimated to be experiencing crisis levels of acute food insecurity, more than half live in Africa. According to recent FAO analysis, in the absence of timely and effective policies, millions more people around the world are likely to join the ranks of the hungry as the result of the COVID-19 triggered recession. Across various market centers here in the greater Accra region, food is abundant, but one main concern has been the prices of most of these products. Consumers are very concerned. They're saying that amidst COVID-19, the cost of food prices could really have a toll on not just their spending patterns, but as well the livelihoods of the various friends and families who earn little to nothing in these times. I'm All right, Charles I to bring in a start report. Now, the Ghana Poultry Farmers Association says the current egg glut is throwing many farmers out of business. Out of the 78 million birds in the country, more than 80% produce eggs. Now, farmers have set up a central system to slash prices for government and corporates who want it in large quantities. Odilia and Tianwa sat through the press conference and has more. The Greater Accra Poultry Farmers Association, taking its turn, said the glut is pushing its members out of business. They are worried loans are also going bad as close to a million eggs sit in the markets. Currently, there are only two egg processors who can process less than 300 crates a day. The truth of the matter is that um, we have eggs 
packed unsold. And uh, for the poultry farmer who has no support, um, finances himself or herself, uh, and uh, uh, sorry to say, he's also not, or he, she's not an NGO. Uh, she's, he or she is into the business for profit. And the eggs um, that have been produced have been produced and are certain. Uh, they are not being consumed. Uh, meanwhile, um, the eggs that we have are good, they are healthy, they can help us um, boost our immune system. Women in the value chain are the most affected as several crates of eggs sit in the major markets unpaid. Over a thousand market women in the value chain have several deaths as they credit the eggs. I think in the poultry sector, most of the artists along the, the value chain who market our products, which are the eggs, are mostly women. And women, um, we, we, we need more um, skills in doing this thing. We need that you build our capacity more to be able to do this business well. So in the midst of this COVID-19, it is these women who are losing most. Some of them carry their eggs to Accra. As we knew, the markets were closed. Some had to return, some bought it and they cannot find them again. Um, now the eggs are left on the farms and also at the market uh, places. Uh, we listen to some of the women who are saying that well, people come to buy and because um, they don't want to leave these eggs to get rotten, they give it out on credit. The people leave and they cannot find them again. And now their businesses are completely down. The Ghana National Poultry Farmers Association is worried the problems cut deeper than an egg clot. Now it's not about how to even survive, but how to look at the next day for production. Farmers usually rely on input distributors, input dealers to source our feed materials. And most times, because of the hardships we go through, we take them on credit. And for most times, we can only pay them back and take more when we have sold our eggs and are able to go back, pay, and take more. But what is happening now? You have produced the eggs. You can't find the market. Even when you are being compelled to reduce prices, the eggs remain in your stores. Unfortunately for egg production, there is no way when the birds are laying, you can tell them, please, the market is bad. So unless they don't produce. So if you have 3,000 eggs sitting on your farm today, the birds, they know nothing. They can't be told not to lay eggs. So it means the next day is going to go up. We have met a challenge that is Difficult, we have never had it in the industry. I have been in the industry for over 20 years, but never has it ever happened. Ghana Poultry Project together with the Farmers Association could be contacted for the eggs at a subsidized cost. All those eggs going waste, too bad. Now, away from the poultry sector, the Ghana Tourism Federation says it is developing a plan to boost domestic tourism, which has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. As government begins easing restrictions, players in the industry hope to make up for losses incurred in the last three months. Executive Secretary of the Ghana Tourism Federation, Emmanuel Fimpong, earlier spoke on the marketplace. It's still going to take a while before things pick up because um, you mentioned the year of return. Mm. Uh, it was quite good for us. And we're looking at beyond the return, which was launched in January by the president. So most of our members were looking at doing some renovations, investment here and there, so that we'll pick up from there. And then COVID came. So um, we, 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 we were hoping that we will have a lot more easing for us, mm. uh, especially with the um, bar operators who are still closed. They can't open because um, the president did not uh, open uh, that session for them. Right. So, uh, yes, we are grateful for the uh, easing, but we thought it would have been a little more uh, far-reaching to other 
um, members of our association. One of the things you're looking forward to uh, was beyond the return. Yes. Obviously, that wouldn't be something that would come on this year, looking at the restrictions that we have right, right. now. But domestically, what are the strategies to push our tourism sector? We have some limited restrictions, but we can do something, right? right. So what are you planning to do? Do you have any strategy in place? Yes. Um, I think about four weeks ago, uh, we had a joint committee between Ghana Tourism Federation and Ghana Tourism Authority to put a committee together to look at um, the impact of COVID-19. One of the things that we discussed extensively was the fact that we need to promote domestic tourism, which when we met uh, President Anna Kufuado, we also reiterated that, that if he could uh, focus on helping us to promote domestic tourism, as in um, getting Ghanaians to appreciate domestic tourism and then we will take it up and work on it because we realize that it is going to take a while before the industry picks up. Uh, a lot of people will not begin to come in even if the airports, the borders are, uh, mm. are opened up. So we think that we should look at domestic tourism and we are engaging GTA to look at the best way that we can do it. Uh, there's a video that they've come out with. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really extensive one. We are working with GTA to look at now that the schools are gradually being also eased up, what is it that we can do using the youth to promote domestic tourism? So there's something on the table that we are working on with GTA. All right, you're watching Business Live. Let's take you next to the Upper East region where the Nara Rural Bank is considering interest waivers on loans for some of its loyal customers. Manager of the bank, Samuel Namok, says although a decision on that is yet to be arrived at, the bank believes that such a move would help keep the businesses of customers afloat in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Correspondent Albert Sorry has more. The Nara Rural Bank Limited prides itself as the bank for the ordinary business person. The bank currently has seven branches located in five districts of the Upper East region and considers the most basic customers as an integral part of its operations. In the wake of the coronavirus pandemic and its ripple effects on the business environment across the globe, Nara Rural Bank is adopting innovative ways to stay in business. Manager of the bank, Samuel Namok, says, in line with their customer-centered principles, the bank is considering interest waivers on loans for some of its loyal customers. We will be taking a look at most of these indicators that are affecting businesses. But what we have taken is that some of our customers who have overdue loans outstanding for a very long time have written to the bank pleading that if there could be interest waiver on some of them and we have gone ahead to consider in that direction but we have not come out categorically to make uh, a clear policy that we are going to reduce our interest rate by a certain margin Liquidity has been a pain among the rural and community banks. And for you to do certain things, you need to do financial analysis, projections here and there, before you can be able to come out with these uh, ideas and submit to your board for consideration for approval. He said, government needs to give serious consideration to the rural and community banks as it disperses the stimulus packages meant to support businesses and industries hit by the coronavirus pandemic in Ghana. We are also praying that if government stimulus packages, especially, uh, should not be centered on the commercial banks or the main banks, it should be zeroed down to the rural and community banks. They are at the grassroots level of the people. So we think that if government stimulo, uh, stimulus packages are coming, the rural and community banks should be given that priority first because looking at our strategic position in which we are and then our, part, part, uh, our partnering role that we have been doing to support government. To support the fight against the spread of COVID-19, Nara Rural Bank has donated some items to the Kasna Nankana West District Assembly at Paga where the bank's headquarters is located. Robert Simple Atiru is the board chairman for Nara Rural Bank. Our president, His Excellency Nana Dodonka Kokwadu, 
has done a lot to fight this pandemic. So Nara Bank, being sensitive to the plight of our people, particularly our Kachma area people, has found it necessary that we also come in to throw our weight behind our president and contribute the little that we have that we hope will go a long way to support in the fight. The items donated included 50 Veronica buckets, 1,200 pieces of nose masks, 150 pieces of 4.5 liter liquid soaps, 250 pieces of 500 milligram liquid soaps, and 540 pieces of 150 milligram hand sanitizers, all at an estimated cost of 35,000 Ghana cities. Receiving the items, the DCE for Kasna Nankana West, Gerald Atawuje, said, more of such donations were needed in the fight against the spread of the coronavirus in that district, especially due to their proximity to neighboring Burkina Faso. Reporting for Joy News, Albert Sorry, Paga. And great to see that uh, corporate institutions and financial institutions are still showing support as we continue to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. That's it for Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com. We have the late day's latest stories there, including um, the interview that uh, my colleague Evans Menza had with the Deputy Energy Minister. Uh, that is Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam. You can read all about that on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Business Live returns same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching.